Uh, YTV Gazette, VTR 1121, part one, take one. Proof page two. Proof page four. Oh, Tom, where's page one? Still in there. Mm. I was going to say. It's my only name. Yes. And I have something for you. What? This note. Well, not from from our bill. Your bill? He says he can't come tonight. Does he? Yes. He can't come tonight because he's busy. Busy? He says I've, I've got, got roped, roped in for the inter shop darts match. That's right. Well, he could have phoned. He did phone. Not me, he didn't. He didn't us neither. And you're only a day. Oh, tar. He got one of his mates to phone from work's canteen to say he wouldn't be home. To tell you he couldn't go skating. And our mum sent me with no. Well, she could have phoned. The nearest box didn't work. I ran here. All the way. And brought the note. Thanks. It's all right. He's smashing into our bill. He's a smashing skater. Better than you. Much better. So, thanks for the message. The note. How will you get home? It's still raining. Running. No buses. One. If I go now. Off then. Here's five bob. There's five pence. You ran here all the way. It's a lot. I got paid this morning. I billed it too. Should have any road. He will be. Hope so. What will you do now? I'm still working. Don't look like. I am, though. But after work? There'll be somebody. As good as our Bill? Nobody who can skate like him. No, he's champion. Your boss, then? I'll off. Take care. Ditto. I think it'll do. Take it down then? Yeah. It's not much of a lead story. No, I'm not bothered by that. It's an important story. The chance of an extra 700 jobs in West Hill is very important. Mm, the chance? Well, the mayor's very confident. So is the town clerk. So, I'm not bothered. It's the rest of the page. It's very heavy. You could lift the dog gives alarm story from page three. No. Let it go. Right. Hey, Ringo. Let's take that down, will you? Right, yeah, danger, man. We're not very cheerful tonight. I'm not surprised. Well, I don't see why. A responsibility. What? Why haven't you worked it out yet? This is the first issue he's put away without Hadley looking over his shoulder. Well, I'd be relieved. Would you? Well, he used to take the responsibility. Oh, he still does. Hardly make sure of that, but he's always around to give advice. Yeah. Civil servants. <laughs> Jealousy will get you nowhere. 
And he did uh, give me a rise. So, jealousy will get me nowhere. You going to buy me a drink? No, I'm not. Listen, I've been worse off since I got that extra five quid a week. New curtains in the living room, kitchen redecorated. And a new fridge. But no, I said I'd be home early. Well, I'm near home, Baker. Well, not of mine, anyway. Good night. Slaves have sometimes been bought a drink by their masters. He's away. Do you miss him? He make us sound like an old married couple. No, a youngish married couple. The tensions are still there. <laughs> Very philosophical. I'd have said observant. You miss him. Yeah, it's like you miss a hacking cough when it's cleared up. And when you know it's going to come back. Mr. Hardly coming back. I don't know. Where's he gone? It's what money's about, you know. A three-day conference on one of his pet subjects. What? A pan-Hellenic conference in Crete about the decipherment of linear A. You never mentioned that to me. It's hardly a subject for polite conversation, is it? So he's gone on a conference and he can afford to go. That what you mean? No, he can afford to come back. But after only three days. Conference in Crete, he flies there, he flies back a day or two in London, I'll see, then back here. I see. Just to go so far is money, but to go for only three days... Is what money's about. <laughs> so, you can't afford to buy me a drink either. I can't afford the time, love. I'll just wait until they bring me up a rough copy. So, I went my lonely way home. Take care. Hello. Hello, Mr. Hadley. On your way home? Of course. It's beastly night. Why don't you let Maxwell take you in the car? He can come back for me later. I'm being rejected all round tonight. On the contrary, you're being protected. You'll be safe with Maxwell. Then couldn't I stay? Now, I have not taken to cradle snatching yet, young lady. Now, do take the car. No, I didn't expect you back so soon. You almost sound pleased. Uh, Everything all right? Yeah, not a brilliant issue, but no problems either. You have a good time? Uh, no. No, there were two good papers. The rest was mere academic mm. hedging. <laughs> and the weather? Oh, that was all right. That was pleasant, but... It's a parochial touch, I suppose. All I get away from home is a feeling of arid lettery. Mm, do you now? A feeling I don't indulge, I may say. And London? Oh, it's just the same there. One night of the club, I didn't want to see those faces again, hear all that civil service gossip. Nothing interesting in it? Nothing that I didn't know before. A few shifts in the intrigue game. Thank you. Let's talk of court things. Who's in, who's out, who loses and who wins. Westdale is going to lose. What do you mean? It's not news, of course. It's clear some nine or ten months ago. What was it? The town's not going to get that much-boosted machine tool plant. The county is not going to get it even. But the mayor and Reed, the town clerk, were more optimistic than usual this week. Peasants. Fortunately, we have better sources of information. Well, not this week we didn't have. You're not plugging that story again. We oh, no. God, it's our front-page lead. Now, what peg do you conceivably hang that on? The minister's visit next week. Oh, I see. Yes, I heard that Gregory was gracing the town with his peasants. I'm very hopeful that the Minister will announce his decision at the meeting on Wednesday. That's a quote from the Mayor. Really? I have every confidence in the strength of the case we presented to the Minister. That's a quote from the Town Clerk. Well, there's no doubt about the strength of the case. It's even the strongest the Ministry considered. Well, then? It's still not going to be accepted. That machine tool plant is going to go to South Wales. You know that? Yes, I do. You heard it in London? Yes. Now, if you now just a minute. Am I being interrogated? 
Well, an interview, perhaps. Yes, well, I will not allow this reversal of roles. You made a mistake. But how? By publishing a story of hopes and beliefs that are not going to be realised. Now, I know they're not. How, when and why I know, that's my business. A good proprietor, to coin a phrase, never discloses the sources of his information. You learn fast. Clichés come as easily to me as they do to most journalists. Now... Is it too late to change that page? Yeah, the run's already started. Ah, uh, yes, well, let it continue. Well, I'm sorry. So am I, and I'm disappointed. God knows you had enough hints about not publishing that story. Hints? Well, you've only got your own prickly pride to blame if it wasn't more than hints. I've learned by now not to issue instructions. Well, perhaps you could learn to share information. If I'm not pursued about the source. All right. Westdale's not going to get that machine tool factory. The minister will say nothing about it on Wednesday. Instead, he will offer a sop. What kind of sop? He'll have news for this town. The promise, no more than that. A firm statement that this town is to get an electronics factory. Well, that's great. <laughs> oh, no, it isn't. Look, that machine tool plant that you, the town clerk and the mayor, pinned your childish hopes to would have employed at least some 1,200 men. And that's not counting the ancillary plants and the employment facilities that would have been available in, oh, say, three years. And the electronics factory? We'll employ at most some 200 women. And our local father figures don't know yet. Any more than our local newspaper knew. Hoodwinked? Well, let's hope so. Now, look Well, don't here. be silly. The alternative is that they were deliberately misleading people, even that you were. Bloody ministers. Bloody ministers, certainly. Gregory is a rogue or a politician. And if there is a distinction... He's a politician that doesn't see one. Corrupt? Not at all, in the conventional sense. I mean, for heaven's sake, he doesn't take bribes or anything like that. No, no, he's concerned, well, not so much with power, even. No, he's concerned with office, with being in office. He likes it. And to hold on to it, he'll do a great deal. Like dismiss the strongest case for one less strong for mere political advantage. What in this case? He'll offer the sop here next week. Then within nine weeks from now, He'll announce the Welsh decision. Why within nine weeks? Because it'll help with a by-election in Wales. There's not an election due here for years. <sighs> oh, look, let me get one thing straight. Yes? The decision not to bring the machine tools plant to Westdale... Ah, was... now you're learning. The decision not to bring the machine tool plant to Westdale was a general political decision. It wasn't social or economic, I'll tell you that. The decision to announce the decision within nine weeks, that was a specific political decision. It will help with the by-election. Otherwise, it could have been an... Yes, now I've got to be careful. Well, it could have been announced several months ago. In your turn at the Ministry? No comment. Is that why you left the Ministry? No comment. And it was? I didn't say so. <laughs> Look no, I know I didn't confer, deny it either. But I will never confirm that. Look, decisions of this sort are never made for just a single reason. But the decision about the machine tools plant was one of the reasons. I will not confirm that. Will you deny it? <laughs> this interview will now end. You'll not forget how it ever began. With the papers being wrong. With the mayor's being wrong. With the town clerks being wrong. And with me being wrong. My. What? With my being wrong, meaning you. Don't say me. It's the possessive parts of it. Uh, with my being wrong. That's right. Come in. I bought the first rough, rough copy. Sure. Well, I thought you'd gone home. I was even offered a car to take me. Restless? Yes. So am I. Hungry? No. I had my supper. I have no special sorrows to down tonight. All right, let's go dancing. Well, where? Anywhere you like. Well, I'm not dressed for the posh places. It's all right. I'm not proud. I've never been to the palais. I can take you somewhere even better. I say, open the high street, it's not bad. This is it, I can come with me. Good evening, folks, and welcome once again to Disco Night at the Westdale Palais. I'm sorry about the crowded floor, but it's not every night we get a full dozen dancing at the same time.
before I forget, all you dolly birds who have yet entered our lovely legs competition have better hurry, because tonight is the last night for entrance in this late and glamour contest. And right now, let's really get rid of them, really swing. Face a queue at the bar after that exertion. Did you know it? Oh, yes, it was fun. But Anno Domino, you know. You're a super dancer. Thank you kindly. They either didn't run to champagne and refused to buy any of those bouncing baby drinks. This is fine. I never thought of you as a beer drinker. Oh, I'm full of surprises. You are, actually. Yeah. You know, you must promise to fend me off. You what? Women have always been my downfall. Always? Mm, always. I'm very susceptible. I've not noticed. I promise to fend me off. Consider yourself protected. Wouldn't do. Not if you went on working for the paper, I wouldn't. You set me up somewhere. <laughs> I'd be glad to. Mind me. Yes, I'm being propositioned. Joking me, of course. Pity. When it happens seriously, give me first refusal. Who's brought this on? Apart from you, you mean? That's right. Oh, it's complicated. I'm sympathetic. Yes, I know. Now, this minute you are. I am. Thank you. So you don't want to tell me? You religious? No, not especially. Then why the hell should I confess to you? No reason. May I have this dance? Mm. You know, you really do deserve something better than a junior post on a crummy newspaper. That's not why I asked you to dance. Thank you again. That makes the third time. Does that mean yes, then? No. No, give me a pause, will you? To recuperate? Oh. Well, I've had several months already. I am back on you. No, not women. But the last woman? The most recent. Present company accepted. Do you want to tell me about it? Yes, I think I do. If you're not sure. But we're not playing journalism tonight. So? So incompetent, in absolute confidence. Mr. Hackett, you are a super dancer. May I have this next dance? And then a sedate drive home with Max Fulton. Hmm? Probably be best. Yes. Private lives. Always get mixed up with. Let me start again. Look, can't part of one's life be kept separate? No, it's very difficult. Business and pleasure, profession, love, infatuation, even. It's very difficult to keep them apart. At least that's what I found. Me too. Me more so. And not unafraid, only now. So he left the civil service because he disagreed with the minister, because the minister ignored overruled the just claims of this town for political reasons. Oh, God. Nick, a fantastic story. Of this paper? It's a bit hard to start it here. But if we sold a piece to the county daily, got them to start it, got the nationals to follow it... And? And then we'd have to reflect it in time for next week's issue. You're joking, of course. Or you'd better be. Why? For two simple reasons. 
He didn't say that's why he left the civil service. How many people do say things? Did he deny it? No. Well, then? He didn't confirm it either, nor would he ever. Perhaps the minister would. Hmm, now you're talking a bit more sense. Only a bit. I'll ask him when he comes. Where? In open press conference. You're going to look pretty silly when the minister replies, are you referring to a former employee of my department who now just happens to be your proprietor? I can just see you biting the dust. Mm, so can I. What was your second simple reason? The Official Secrets Act. What? Hadley, and I remember this clearly, said he knew about this decision several months ago. Well, it still hasn't been announced, so how do we know what it is? Because he told us. He told me, and thus broke the Official Secrets Act. Hadley said he knew about this when he was still a silver servant and a senior one. To reveal his knowledge now is to break the law. Well, the politicians write memoirs, yeah, generals about do. About past history, about history almost, not about now, not about news. <laughs> So we're hamstrung. Well, they'd be bound to know who told this paper. We have the obvious source. We can't reveal it or him. We could drop hints oh, and without subtle space. Well, I have been known. If you to... open your mouth one inch about this, and I'll fire you just like that. Well, no, I didn't all mean right, that. I'm sorry I shouted, but I mean it all the same. Just don't open your trap about it. Come in. Morning. Morning. Hello. Should I go away? Well, if you think that, why did you come in? Because Johnson, the town clerk, is on the phone. He wants to speak to you. He doesn't ring that often. Did you have a good time last night? Hmm, all right. Mr Hadley's a super dancer. Wish I were. Well, you're not. He's not married either. Oh, my, my. Oh, not like that. Driven straight home by that ogre Maxwell, straight to the door, and a good night, Miss Jackson. Thank you, Miss Jackson. Must make a change. Why are you so bitchy? Jealous. Oh, rubbish. There's something up. You and Mr. Hadley last night, you and Bill just now, and this minute, you and me. What is it? Oh, this story, it's all wrong. And Hadley told you it was? It's the only way I know. Then he could be wrong. Yes, he could be, but I don't think he, he is. It's perhaps why he left the civil service, because it's a wrong decision and oh, he no. didn't... What then? Because of a woman. Did he tell you that? No, and I don't want to talk about it. What woman? I don't know. And if I did, I wouldn't tell. And if you didn't tell, you wouldn't go on working for this paper. Not if you danced with your proprietor every night or jumped into bed with him either. He said not if I went on working for the paper. Well, I expect two weeks' notice. I remember, sir. Well, have you been given the freedom of the butter? The town clerk was phoning on behalf of the mayor, he said, or as well as on his own behalf, he said, and very grateful they both were, he said, and the town would be too, he said. Why did he phone the editor, then? Oh, I knew it must have been your influence, Mr Spence, he said. Your editor, Mr Walters, always seemed a bit uh, sceptical. Very, very grateful, he said. Well, let's hope they'll be as affable next week. But you just said... You did say that we couldn't print but the I true story. I how yet, but I don't want to land anybody in it, not even our proprietor. The minister's speaking at... Uh... A Chamber of Commerce dinner. All fairly jolly, you see, non-political. He's the guest of honour. Mm, how many speeches? And mostly all his toast to the Queen, then West Hill Chamber of Commerce welcomes its guests, the chairman, that steward, the managing director of the dye works, the minister responds. With his sop. His what? West Hill is to get one new plant. Well, you know that That's now. That's my information. I wonder if the town clerk knows. Well, for West Hill's sake, I hope so, otherwise it'll all end in vast surprise and vast applause. The other project just gets left out? I don't know. Depends how cunning or conniving the minister is. He could just not mention it. Yeah, and he could just regret that he's not yet able to announce the decision. Well, even though it's been taken? Even though it was taken months ago. He should be tackled, you know. By you. I don't think I know how to do it properly. Then by you. Hmm. Well, let's just see if we can set up an interview first. You know, local paper, small stuff, but we'd be very grateful well, if... Well, I could handle that. And then you'd go? <laughs> I'd love to send our proprietor. You could always ask him. I think you're out of your mind. Apart from the fact that I've no experience as a reporter, and apart from that, I have no desire to see the Right Honourable Austin Gregory ever again. No, I will not be attending that dinner. 
Your dinner jacket in shape? I never had one. But you... I used to share one with my cousin, but he's moved. Then press your suit. I could hire a dinner jacket. Yeah, 35 bob, all right, if you can afford it. If I can afford it? No, seven and six is the going rate for straight evening expenses. All right, then, I'll go in a suit, I'll look a mug... Get and a everyone free meal to... and any amount of drink. Mm, sir, you mean you're not going to do the dinner yourself? Yeah, I've got two formal do's already this week, and before you make any daft suggestions, Mr Hadley isn't going to be there either. Quote, I never want to see the right Honourable Austin Gregory ever again, end quote. Now, that's bitter talk. Yeah, I noticed that. A real personal conflict? Well, it can happen between uh, civil servants and their political bosses. Yeah, except Sue said, quote, because of a woman, end quote. The right honourable Austin Gregory is married. So what? Well, she's rather a dish, a bit out of my age group, but not out of yours or Hadley's. Again, so what? Well, she's coming with her husband to this do. And? Hadley didn't mention her. No. I wonder why he's not going to that dinner. It look a bit odd, you know. They only told me about your refusal this morning. Why should they tell you at all? Because I'm a former president. I'm still on the committee. Oh, yeah. They're sorry about your refusal. Well, that's kind of them. I'm not sorry. I'm more surprised. Really? Oh, don't be so damned supercilious. It's odd. What's more important, it looks odd. More important? In this case, yes. You worked in the ministry. You held rank in the ministry. Your minister, your commanding officer, as it were, comes to your hometown, you're not among those who turn out to meet him. I've met him. Tongues will wag. Let them. They'll say Hadley's had a row with the minister. Let them. It's true, then. Who cares? I care. For your sake. You're becoming increasingly important in Westdale. Yes, well, not by choice. In that case, you ought to feel flattered. Your uncle, leave it, will you? I don't want to see Austin Gregory, and I'm fairly certain that he doesn't want to see me. Kept you a seat at my table. Mm, I'm sorry. An important table of guests. Mm, I'm sure. Among them... Yes, I don't want to... Among them, Mrs Austin Gregory. Helga. The rumours are true, then. What rumours? Mrs Austin Gregory and one of her husband's principal undersecretaries. I'm surprised they allowed you to resign. They couldn't afford the scandal, I suppose. There was no scandal. Well, that's why they allowed you to resign. Now you're being ridiculous. Well, I don't think I am. If I were, you'd be a lot more angry. Well, there was nothing to it. At least not much. More or less than there is with Miss Susan Jackson. You are well informed. Don't underestimate me, James, and answer my question. More or less? More. All right, a lot more. She sounds a handsome woman. Oh, she is. What about him? Him, he's a... Oh, he's a rogue. He's a rogue politician. He's smooth, he's eloquent and without an ounce of principle. He's got lots of charm and a filthy temper. Potter, blur the carriage blinds. And let's have a little privacy. Yes, Minister. I'll do it, Potter. Just see that Mr Gregory gets his drink soon. Yes, of course. You don't endear yourself to your secretaries. The man irritates me. Where is this place, Westdale? What time do we arrive? About three hours, if we're lucky. It's 200 miles, and a depressing bloody place when you get there. I'm sorry. I'm very irritable this morning. You should take a tranquilizer. <laughs> what? Well, I've got British Railways champagne to look forward to. Two half bottles, so they didn't happen to have a whole bottle of the kind you asked for. What a pity. It's all right. Mm. Just drinkable. I'll call when I want you. Yes, Minister. I've tasted worse. So have I. <laughs> I once had a splitter bottle with a party agent at Pontypris. <laughs> Great champagne country, Pontypris. <laughs> better than Westdale. Any place would be better. 
What's wrong with Westdale? It's full of bloody Yorkshiremen smoking pipes and eating fish and chips. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't mean that. Why are you dragging me to this ghastly place if you hate it so much? For moral support? From me? Moral confirmation, anyway. Oh. I thought that was a movement. <laughs> I want to make sure. Of uh, my movements? Of your reaction. I shall be calm, poised, and a little aloof, as usual. <laughs> I was particularly anxious for you to come on this trip. Why? Westdale happens to be James Hadley's hometown. James Hadley? Hmm. I knew he came from Yorkshire, but... Well, didn't he discuss his background with you? Curiously enough, no. Well, he'll be at this dinner tonight. I see. Well, in that case... I shan't be. This train stops at Wakefield, I believe. I shall get off there. No, you will not. Let me get this quite clear. You want me to meet James Hadley again? In public, briefly, calmly, poised, and a little aloof. Why? Politics is a funny business. <gasps> I know. It used to be a void divorce. Now divorce doesn't matter or not much, just so long as it's not too scandalous. I could have divorced you over James Hadley. You know I could. I chose not to. Because I love you. And I didn't love him. But then you don't love me either. No matter, not in, not in this argument. Well, what does matter then, in this argument? Well, if I had a reputation as a philanderer, it wouldn't matter so long as I kept it discreet. What I cannot afford, as a politician, is a reputation as a, as a cuckold. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> it's such an old-fashioned word. I haven't heard it outside Shakespeare or, or translations of Italian opera. <laughs> it's still the right word. No, do stop laughing. An indiscretion on your part, there's one thing. I. Handle it, I forgive it. That's both powerful and magnanimous at the same time. And it stops the club talk. But not a continuing indiscretion. This one is over. And it must be seen to be over. Poor James. What? He was always there when I wanted him. It wasn't very many times. Times enough. Let's not have inquests, but not many times. And so you sacked him. <laughs> I didn't say that. It's what they say in the clubs. It's what they think in the clubs. And this visit, my being with you, suits your image. Very much so. Open the other bottle. <laughs> Certainly. James likes champagne. He could afford it, too. I knew he was well off. You don't do too badly with me. It's partly why I stay. Partly? It's more than money. I'm, well, I suppose I'm like you. I like, how would you put it? I like the precedence, the importance. Not just having a reserved compartment. Anyone can buy that. But having it, automatically. People with such privileges have responsibilities. To uh, keep their reputations clean. Mm. Politics is a dirty business too, remember. But a quiet business. Decisions, real decisions about people, are made quietly. It's only the flim-flam of publicity that causes a fuss. I'm all right, which means we're all right. I'll preserve your importance, your precedence. With a little help. I'll drink to that. I was just going to offer to open it. Late again. Oh, never mind, old chap. Let's just have a look at the speech, shall we? Yes, Minister. It's been
been issued to the press minister with the usual embargo on publication, of course. And the usual warning, check against delivery, I hope? Yes. Good. Yes. Well, let's see if we can get some style into your lousy prose, shall we? Yes, Mr. You won't say that? No? No. He's a stickler for grammar. Like you. Well, somebody on this paper's got to be. Yes, I wonder. What? I wonder if he'll dare say that. Style? No, content. He knows that's a lie. So what? He knows that I know it's a lie. So what? I think that one phrase is a challenge. To you? A personal challenge, yes. You're going to take it up? That's what you do with challenges, isn't it? That's right. You know, if he says that, I'll expose him totally. Come in. Yes? The Westell Gazette, the interview with the minister. Oh, is it five o'clock already? Uh, the minister's resting. Yes, yeah, right now, honey. Then I'll just finish this. Take a seat. Revising the speech, are you? A few minor points. Ah. The unrelated participle on page five. The whole of the third sentence on page seven. How did you know? And what I'm sure he'd describe as the fallacy of the undistributed middle in the second paragraph of page 11. But how did you know? Uh, a good journalist never discloses the sources of his information. He checks its accuracy, though. Thank you for confirming mine. But I didn't say anything. Well, you didn't need to, really, did you? Um, are there any other changes? No. No. At least... Well, none of note. No. Good. Why should there be? No reason. It's just that uh, when you get handouts like this, your shorthand gets a bit rusty, you know. Do you mind if I copy this revised paragraph? Help yourself. Thank you. Potter. Do go and waken the minister. You know how he hates dressing in a hurry. Yes, yes, of course. Good evening, Mrs. Gregory. Oh, the local paper, the, um, uh... West Air Gazette. Yes. Yes, I see. Potter, do go and wake the minister. Oh, yes, yes. What are you doing here? What the man said. But you're not a reporter. Reporter, no, I... Just occasionally. See what happens to the reporters. Why? I employ one or two. Didn't Austin tell you? I am the Gazette. No. No, he didn't. I wonder why. He must have known. His inquiry agents were always very efficient. It must have been on my background file. He won't find this funny. I didn't expect him to. Then why did you... What do you want? An interview with your husband, the one he promised. You're up to something. Oh, oh darling, Helga. Oh, you were the one who was up to something. Something I enjoyed. I'm sorry, this interview is not about you. But Austin won't believe that. No? No. He brought me with him to make a final end of the talk... The talk in the, in the club. Those were his words. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wrote so many for him that he talks like me now. Well, I think you'd better leave us alone for the interview. I don't want to leave him. Oh, I don't want you to either. Not for me. Now, I mean that kindly. This interview's not about you. I mean to keep him. He's welcome. I've had my lesson. The minister's ready now. Well, young man, I'm afraid I haven't much time. Come along, party. Introduce us. Minister, this is the representative of the Westdale Gazette. Oh. How do you do, sir? How kind of you to spare us this time for the interview. How do you do? You can do that somewhere else. 
Of course, Minister. Now, Minister. Unless you'd like me to stay and take yes, notes, Minister. Well, what are your first impressions of Westdale? <laughs> oh, come now. I barely had a chance to see it. But I think the, the countryside around yours... <sighs> what the hell are you doing here? I came to see... Well, I came to see you. What for? My erstwhile function, to give you advice. What about? Oh, about the big words. Such as? Honesty, integrity, telling lies. <laughs> what lies? Exceptionally, lies you haven't yet told. Don't tell this one. Which one? Are there so many others in this oration? Here, try it. <laughs> Let me see. I regret not yet to be able to bring you the news you have every hope of hearing. The news that with government encouragement and assistance, West is to be the site for the Parker Orbach machine tools plant. I cannot bring you that news because the decision has not yet been taken. The fact is to be balanced, the claim of region against region and town against town. Flabby. Oh? Oh. <laughs> Too many subordinate clauses, eh? And untrue. Yes. So don't tell that lie. Why not? It's unnecessary. They expect something. You're giving them something. Yes. Now, the paragraph about the about the, the fact that they are going to get is um, quite good. Well, yeah. it's fair. I myself would describe it as a major technological advance. Breakthrough? It's a very nasty cliche. Thanks. I'll remember. And remember to forget that lie. Why should I? Because I'll have to put myself in jeopardy if you don't. How? By saying that it is a lie in my newspaper. Oh, you don't. Oh, you try me. The only way you can know the decision has already been taken is because you were on my staff at the time. Exactly. Yes, so to reveal that knowledge would... You're mad. I could have you over a barrel with the Official Secrets Act. And I would. Of course. So you're only bluffing. And you're only pretending to be simple. How? You want me to expose you. Oh, surely not. Oh, yes, you do. So that I land myself in trouble. Which you will do. And then we could both say that that was why I resigned. Your motives would be local. A Westdale patriot. And yours would be, shall we say, personal? It would stop the, the talk in the clubs. The talk in the clubs, oh, that's God. right. <laughs> Go to hell. You see, I can't lose. If I tell the lie, and I think I shall, either it will serve its immediate purpose or you will expose it, and thus the telling will have served another purpose. I can't lose. Bluff. Double bluff. Double, double bluff. Uh -huh. Oh, no matter. <clears throat> Minister, the time is really ah. getting... Come in, Potter. Two years at the Ministry of Agriculture didn't suit you to this cesspool, did it? Austin is ready for you now. Austin? Ah, yes, of course, you don't know, do you? I'm James Hadley, late of your present ministry. Oh, I've heard the name, of course. Yes, yes. Well, goodbye, Austin. Give my love to Helga. And, of course, I quite understand why you don't want me to come to that dinner. It would be rubbing your nose in it a bit, wouldn't it? How strange it should be Mr. Hadley. Go would... away. Has he gone? Mr. Hadley asked the minister to give you his uh, love. Damn. Damn, damn. I told you you, sh you should treat him better. Now he'll go and gossip. I'll square them both. How can you? I suspect that bastard Hadley knows. So you threatened him? Well, that's putting it rather high, but I warned him. How did he take it? He threatened me. <laughs> Frightened? No, but I'm worried. I'm worried I may have to do what I said I'd do. Despite the Official Secrets Act? Yes. In this paper? That's right. You take a week's holiday. And you tell the press council and the police you knew nothing about it. Mm, I'll think about it. You'll do as you're told. I don't want you getting into trouble. I shall need you to run this paper if they put me in jail. <laughs> Cheerful. Yes, of course. So, you get along now. Shall I get Spence to ring you at home? Uh, no, he's coming here. Well, he doesn't usually. Well, I asked him to. I want a full report. All the nuances, the reactions, the attitudes. And it seemed unfair to drag him out to the hall. Well, I could hang on. 
and ruin your arrangements? Well, how do you know? Table for two at the Clarendon, 7.45. Wedding anniversary is only come once a year. Don't disappoint your wife. <laughs> Thanks. And don't let's have any sulky growls when you learn that the wines have been ordered for you. It's my gesture to your state of marital bliss. Thanks. I feel like a bra. Well, you never know, do you? Make sure your wife does tonight. <laughs> Goodbye. Can I drop you? I'm staying. I need my hand held. I'll do the same for you sometime. I'll remember that. Good night. Good night. The night of the long knives. You are bothered by Gregory. Yes. Yes, I am deeply bothered. Then let's drown our sorrows. What? Hang on. Oh, I should have thought of that. It's just as well you drank beer last time. I'm always broke by Wednesday. Well, you must let me. Next time. Is that a promise? Uh, down with politicians? But you can't say that, Minister. Since when have I needed your permission? I have the right to. I have the duty of giving you advice. Which on this, as on several other occasions, I choose to disregard. But it's unprecedented to make such personal statements. Oh, about. do be quiet. Run along and make sure the car is ready, will you? Yes, Minister. Perhaps I shouldn't wear the emeralds. We mustn't look too prosperous. On the contrary, my dear, Westdale isn't a slum. You couldn't possibly look overdressed in this place. Mm. God, these are dreary surroundings. I'm used to them. Slave. It was Mrs. Gregory? Yes and no. Yes, in part. It was, shall we say, an awkward situation. I saw her at the station. She's very striking. Oh, she is. And he knew? Mm. That's what made it so difficult. Hell, we saw each other nearly every day. So you resigned? <laughs> well, he showed no signs of doing so. You could always have transferred to another ministry. Oh, there's a clever girl. Then why? It shows I didn't resign because of the lovely Mrs Gregory, doesn't it? Why did you, then? Perhaps Mr Gregory will tell us tonight. To which the leader of the opposition replied, my dear Prime Minister, that is the best news I've heard for ten years. <laughs> now, now I come to some news which I fear can in no way be described as good news for Westdale. I am aware that people have been led to believe and that some indeed have pinned their hopes on the sighting of a large machine tools plant on the outskirts of this town. Mr. Mayor, I regret to have to inform you that the plants have been sighted elsewhere in the United Kingdom. <laughs> I know this will be a bitter blow and that this decision taken by the Cabinet will come as a great disappointment to you all. Particularly, I venture to say, to a prominent member of your community, a friend and former colleague of mine with whom my wife and I had an agreeable meeting earlier today. It is not customary to break the anonymity of the civil service, and most of you will know that I am referring to the distinguished proprietor of the Westdale Gazette, a scion of one of Westdale's oldest families, Mr. James Hadley. Now, Mr. Hadley resigned his post on precisely this issue. He felt that Westdale needed and indeed deserved this new industry. When the cabinet decided otherwise, he handed in his resignation. It was a brave gesture, a decision I regretted but still felt I had to applaud. Mr. Mayor, 
Let me assure you, Whitehall's loss is Westdale's gain. Before I sit down... And after the usual pat on the back for our local industries, he sat down to roars of applause. And that was it? Verbatim. So he told the truth. How does it feel to be a, a hero? Never you mind. Anything else? Yes, why aren't you in a dinner jacket? I haven't got one. Get one. The paper will pay 50%. Ta. And thanks. For what? For traipsing back here with the good news. Now, hadn't you better get along before your wife starts asking questions? Oh, well, she's used to me uh, coming in at all hours. Then surprise her. Right. Good night, Sue. Good night, Good night, Mr. Hadley. Excuse me, Mr. Hadley. I'm from the Gazette. Have you any comments to make on the Minister's reference to yourself and his speech tonight? Yes, I have, Miss Jackson, and you can quote me on this. Never, ever mix business with pleasure. <laughs> 